Why don't you start us off, Joel? All right. Introduce today's special guest. Aloha, everybody. Welcome to the Ukulele Review Podcast, powered by Hawaiian Music Supply and the Ukulele site. Today, Neil Chen is joining us. We haven't seen him since Anaheim. Yeah. But he's all the way here from Seattle, and we're very excited. Right now, it's just uh, me, Neil, and Andrew's here. The other guys are at work, but they'll be in anywhere shortly. And what are we going to do today, Andrew? We're going to, I don't know. Ukulele stuff, probably. Mm, <laughs> Most <right>. likely. <laughs> Definitely. First, we're going to talk to Neil. And, oh my God, this new instrument you just picked up this afternoon. Just this afternoon. Gorgeous. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's get into that thing. Talk about it. Yeah. Um, so this is a, one of a Black Label um custom ukulele and um, really excited with this one uh, got a cedar top and rose it back insides and um, I really like the Maui inlay <laughs> on the 10th and the 12th and then kind of kind of kind of finished off on the bottom over there as well and um, yeah I've just uh, I mean I you know literally just picked it up four hours ago five hours ago so I'm still kind of getting used to it and well acquainted with it but so far, I mean, fresh out of the box, I feel like it has a really nice, tight sound. Like the low end isn't like really boomy, and the highs are really clear and whatnot too. And I'm really excited to kind of grow old with it and let it get warmer and warmer because that's kind of the tone that I want out of my instrument. So, mm, yeah. it's the mark of a amazing product is something you look forward to growing old with. Yeah, <laughs> sure, sure. Oh, you're a lifer. Yo, for sure. your last one, you had for nine you said nine almost 10 years right yeah and that's the last my Koloa. i mean at that i mean up until this point has been my favorite ukulele you know i mean that's even all my recordings and stuff like that you know i have new ukuleles that i use when i tour and stuff and do workshops and whatnot but when i record it's definitely always that my love you know Dude, <laughs> I, and guess, I was just, jamming on when we we're in california the thing it just kept getting warmer and warmer all warmer. those years it sounded right? awesome yeah and I'm really excited. I mean, just I've been playing on koa ukuleles for, you know, since since then, basically, actually before that, too, when I was younger. And so this is the first instrument that I have that is, I mean, it's a different wood pairing, too. And so I'm kind of curious to kind of see what kind of arrangements, I guess, and what that will kind of just like, you know, kind of force me into in a good way. You know, I think having those constraints um, in an instrument are nice. So I was just talking to a customer about that because they it was actually funny because they have a few koalohas. Mm. And then they were thinking like, they were thinking about getting another one, but then they started thinking, you know, maybe step out of that box or look at different wood pairings, basically. Right. And I was like, yeah, because, you know, you kind of get used to one thing and maybe you start, you kind of put yourself in a little bit of a box well, and then you sure. hear a different tone or a different wood combo and it kind of pulls something else out of you that maybe you weren't feeling when you're comfortable just swimming in that tone that you already have. Right. It's like playing with pedals, right? You, it, you put a pedal in, it's yeah. like you might come up with something totally different. That's a good, yeah, for sure, for sure. And I mean, at, at the minimum to be a stimuli, because the thing is, I feel like, um, you know, kind of being in around ukulele shops and instrument shops for a good portion of my life, you know, you get to like pick up these different instruments and that, that kind of helps with that, you know, and, but it's a, such a quick stimuli that like I can like take that idea that comes from that instrument and then put it into you know, my ukulele that I'm comfortable with. So I guess kind of having it now as like a permanent fixture, you know, is yeah, pretty sweet. <laughs> yeah, you get to explore it more. It's the same thing. Exactly. I get my fix because I get to play all these cr ones, you know, after they're done being set up. I don't go crazy on them, <laughs> but I got to test them out. So I kind of, you control. know, <laughs> yeah. So I get to play them and I kind of scratch that itch and you get to try a bunch of different things. And then there's stuff that I've come up on on one that, you know, I threw on like an electric guitar or something and I just, you know, but it, you kind of get to play around in all these different little streams that maybe you sure. wouldn't anyway. And now that you have it, you can just, just go all the way. Into it. Right, right, right. I don't even know what you guys are talking about, really. Like, like different woods? or Like if you have the same instrument for years, you're so in tune with that. And like maybe you kind of play within the box of like the, the tone and everything that it inspires out of you. But then someone hands you their guitar. Oh. And however it sounds, you just like you decide to kind of maybe do something different, like it pulls something else out of you. Right. Right. But in in this context, like, were you playing like other woods from other instruments and stuff? And then I mean, just in general. Right. I mean, like hopping between, you know, different. I mean, I feel like it's that same kind of comparison. 
right? Because like I feel like when you pick up a different, if I were to pick up one of these ukuleles here, that it would kind of ask for a different song, or you know,、uh-huh. ask for a way of playing, and so having a different tone, you know, I feel like is that you know. Kind of equitable to that, even if it's like, if, even if the build was exactly the same. I mean, just having like a little bit, and the feel is the same. Having a bit of different tone will, yeah, this make one should inspire new,、right. new right. things. Yeah, and you're gonna probably、um, still go to the koa once in a while, and oh, for know, sure, for sure, certain. I I don't know. Well, talk about the differences you hear like right off the bat. Sure, I mean the. Part of it is the because this is cedar, Macassar, ebony, or what?、Uh, cedar and、uh, rosewood. Rosewood on、okay. the back, yeah.、So. Turn that around. Yeah. That's a dark. Oh, dark, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. So how does this sound different right off the bat? I mean, it's it's crazy because I mean, just like right off out of the the box, so to say, you know. I mean, I feel like it already has like a. a A good amount of sustain and it's a balanced sustain too, which is really nice. And I think it's the combination of having cedar and rosewood. I feel like, but、um, I can't imagine like. It's really, like a fair amount of attack. It's really、so、controlled. Exactly. That's kind of what we noticed it's, about. It's a really good studio piece because it seems like all the tones are. In you know they they like the koa almost wants to bump some of the low mids sometimes too much or like、mm-hmm. certain aspects like that right right and I I really like kind of one of my big passions for playing ukulele is doing like chord solos and standards and stuff like that and that requires I feel like you know these like chunky four note you know chords and and sometimes that that boominess、um, is a little bit hard to cut you know especially you know when you're jamming with people and whatnot like other guitarists and things. But、um, I think having it being a little bit tighter, I can kind of like dig into it a little bit,、mm. and it doesn't sound like like you're hearing just the low G. And, right. You know, right.、Um, you hear each note better. Right. Yeah. Just the general clarity, I think. It, in, but yeah, but yeah, from that balance, because,、um, yeah, it's it's like it takes a. Uh, if if some of the lower notes want to jump out a lot, right, then that's all you're going to hear in the. In、right. the chord, right,、yeah. and for me, I mean, that kind of changed the way that I mean, with the ukulele that I had or have the other koala, the classic tenor. I mean, I felt like the low end is so strong that I started developing a style around that. So,、right. like, use utilizing the low G as like a, a base, you know, basically, and、uh, um, and like kind of making like you know small small bass lines and stuff like that because that, having that impact on the low end was a nice tool for certain arrangements. Sure, yeah, so. It's it's got its place, but then it also probably、uh, subconsciously you learn to lay back on it when you need to and play around it. Yeah,、right? exactly, exactly. And I feel like just again, I know it's only been it's,、uh, uh, just today, but like I feel like just in like the little bit of I played like a couple of arrangements this afternoon, of the ones that I kind of really dig into it, and it was nice and balanced. Yeah, which is really I, great. I, I played it and it felt amazing too, like really good、yeah. setup. Without having to go to jail, no, I yeah no, I felt awesome. Yeah, all the all the black label and red label stuff, it feels good. Feels good. Yeah, yeah. especially yeah, because you say like you're doing like really like you're doing jazzy like chord stuff all over the neck, right? Right. So it's kind of nice to have that consistent feel and an attack you can put on it rather than having it that gradient as it goes up. Right. Exactly. I, I noticed that on your other when I was playing your your koa tenor, that's kind of the overall setup and feel that. It's just、right. nice for that. It's、right? awesome. Sure, sure. <laughs> and so that's why I mean, like I'm, like now that the school year is over and whatnot. I mean, this summer and I have a little bit extra time that I definitely want to like start recording more again. And like I feel like I have all these ideas now that I really want to you know put into action. And I feel like having these different instruments are going to be a really great way to, you know, have some kind of stimuli because I could use like the, the koa ukulele you know for maybe like chords and whatnot down here for that nice chunk. And then maybe like do chord solos up here or single note stuff because I feel like the cedar helps make it cut too. So you can do some cool split videos. You do have both instruments and you play both parts. Yeah, just put the tracks over. Exactly. Very cool. Exactly. Yeah, I definitely want to do those. <laughs> What was the process? Were you working with Grizz more or with Paul?、Uh, Grizz, yeah, mostly with Grizz. So I,、uh, I guess it was in January when I was here, right before Nam.、Um, 
we just kind of uh, uh, talked about it, and he just said, "Time, to, you know, it's time to make you a <laughs> a custom." So we went through all the specs at that point, actually, and he just kind of fed me like photos, you know, process, you know, as it's getting built. But I love it when your voice cracks. <laughs> Mine's been doing it all earlier. I think yeah. it. You think I was so? trying to think if it happened already. <laughs> Three awkward fellows here talking about ukes. <laughs> I'm just a growing boy. Oh, well, you know. <laughs> like, but, like my ukulele. <laughs> so, so, you know, you wanted, you knew Cedar Rosewood was what you, what you were looking for for this one. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I definitely, I, I, I've always been kind of um, attracted to cedar tops. And I mean, because I like that punch, but I still like the warmth. And so I felt like, um, and then Grizz told me about the couple of rosewood sets that he had. And I said, yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's do that for the back and the sides for a little bit of low end just to kind of balance it out. So it's one of my favorite combos, cedar and then either ebony or rosewood for the back. Yeah. Right. Cause you get the nice density, but then the top is so soft. You get the projection, yeah. but it's warm. Exactly. It's awesome. Exactly. It's interesting. You picked Maui cause you're from Kauai, right? <laughs> that just would be weird. <laughs> oh, big island over here. Big yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be funny if they got the island wrong. <laughs> yeah, we were talking today. It's like if you cut off the the body part and you just look at the head, it kind of looks like cool. You know, or, or oh, a small one. Maybe, yeah. like, or maybe you just cut off the it could kind of be big island. I think yeah. Clay's here. Hey, what's up? I mean, we are recording. But... I was supposed to text Clay and it didn't. I forgot. <laughs> That's my bad. What's up, dude? Good to see you, man. You ruined everything. What's up? Right? How's it going? How's it going? Oh, that was a good clap. Right? I know. I'm always gunning for it. <laughs> it's like a very sad one. Hey. The traveler. The traveler over here. What's up, bro? What's up, dude? Is that your, is that your majestic you? <laughs> yep. This is a bad boy. Yeah. Give it a spin. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thanks, man. That's awesome. Custom. Custom. Ooh, custom black label. Yeah. Oh. Yep. Things are added again. Whoa. Is this a button? <laughs> So this is for the, the strap. Yeah, yeah. 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 And then, like, you okay. swivels out. What is this? So, like, doesn't you have to, like, doesn't eat away on the strap? That's genius. I know, right? That's, that's, a, that's a pretty good idea. All those people that wanted that second strap button installed. Well, what is this brand? What is this? Uh, Music Nomad, I think it's the brand. Oh, so this is just actually, like, the, the jack. You can just twist this on anything. Yeah, just right at the shop, we just, oh, like, took genius. off the cap and then just put that one on. Because they're selling it at the, selling it there now, too. You put a bags in? Yeah. Man, they always are so balanced, yeah. <laughs> that, dude, that's, hey, is it? <laughs> last week when Paul was here, that's what we said. That's what everyone said about that's it's probably it's probably the concert body blowing up too, right? Right. Oh, it yeah. doesn't have as much of the low sure. end as the like the regular tender shape, right? That's a good point. Yeah. Or that means the, the bottom out is yeah. smaller, right? Yeah. This is ebony? Rosewood. Oh wow. Yeah, it's just dark rosewood. Really dark rosewood. Super dark, yeah. It's so why everyone's saying the same thing. Yeah. Is there a Brazilian? Like, it's like we all notice the same thing. <laughs> oh, the headstock's very unique too for Joel. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's what Joel said too. We just Big, see so yeah. many youths. It's like yeah. a child's right, hand. Yeah. Exactly. You guys got the eyes for it, man. Sure, it feel like the balance of like by the heel. Like it's it's not like too neck heavy either. Not at all. It's pretty even. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Balance. This heel this looks gorgeous. kind of big too, yeah. Oh, it doesn't go any lower. Oh, sorry. Alright, yeah, it's, so it's, it's better if you go high and then you just... You must be stoked though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a beautiful instrument. Unless you want to stool. This is awkward. It's awkward. Oh, you just kind of picked it up? Right? <laughs> yeah, it's like I got this exactly. Yeah. 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 Did, you, did you fly here just to grab it? You bet you did. Oh, too close. Is that Andrew? Yeah. Die. Oh, you know what? This is from the Leilani guy. It's a case sample for you guys. Plug it in. We might have to like... So... Neil, what's uh, what's the trick to teaching second graders? Uh, rhythm. That's ah. that is the if I had to sum it up in one word, hmm. I would say rhythm. Because kids, I feel like, are so much more. It, it is it blows it it blow, continues to blow my mind. I should say on just how in tune kids are to rhythm and how they can pick up rhythm so fast. I mean, be teaching like adults mostly for the past five years or so you know rhythm can sometimes be a, a bit of a challenge like everyone's mm. asking like hey how do you do the strumming pattern right mm. what is the strumming pattern about the strum mm. and eventually you're just kind of like you just have to listen to like the raw elements of it don't think about you know the direction yeah. of your hand you think about the rhythm yeah. 
right? Feel it. Feel mm. it. Feel mm. the rhythm. That, and that's what I say. And it's crazy because kids don't have the, all those that the analytical, like, yeah. okay, so how do I break this down? Yeah. And like, but it was a down right? or up, a do, uh, up, down, yeah, yeah. down, 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 up, up, down, down, down. More of a worrying about, okay, this is the sequence, yeah. like learning a mathematics or something like that. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's like, the feel of the rhythm is mm. is kind of the hardest yeah cool thing, right yeah cool. and that's where like i mean we do like rhythm games pretty much just like daily and it's kind of nuts because like i start off really simple in the beginning and then just like two weeks or three weeks in like i think i did like a bossa nova one day just like i'm like oh, i'm gonna i'm just gonna like test these kids and see how they react and it was i was blown away you know mm -hmm. 20 something kids all clapping the You know, and if you're used to the genre and the, and the music, it's one thing, but these are, you know, kids of now. Yeah. So they're used to four on the floor, right? <laughs> or, you know, or something to that effect. Mm. So it's, yeah, rhythm is the mm. trick. And they get into it. Yeah. yeah. Because, mm -hmm. you know, that natural feeling that you have, you know, when you hear like a good mm. groove or something like that, you just yeah. kind of mm. channel that same feeling and just put it in a elementary school uh, frame, I guess. Yeah. It's well, funny. kids, they're not, like, afraid to try stuff, too. And that's, that's huge. Yeah. That's huge, they're right? self-conscious. Yeah. Right. That's what I, and that's what I, got. I mean, for me personally, I'm for my adults, too, I always tell them, like, try to make as many mistakes as you can, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just, like, just do it. Just just do it. <laughs> but adults are afraid to make mistakes. Right. That's what yeah. I found in, like, you know, all the workshops, you know, like, stuff. Right. <laughs> it's like, right. Well, you, you know, the thing with, with me is, like, if there's a different type of a strum, say, that I'm trying, like... I'll, I'll go back to what I'm comfortable with because mm. I know it's going to sound better rather than sounding awkward with like a new style. So right. it's, but, you know, taking the time to be awkward with it and just work it out. That's something that, you know, kids do well. But, mm. you know, right. if you're able to tap into that, you know, kid-like sensibility where you don't have to like, you know, fulfill your ego yeah, at every right. level right? you're not grading yeah. yourself every yeah. time or whatever baggage mm. you come to with that you gotta I, i'm failing if i'm not getting this right or get frustrated and that makes it even harder right it's more the process of working it through and then as you start to yeah it it's uh it's something that i mean so you're teaching second and third graders yeah now? right just between the months of january and beginning of june so i'm flying back the end of this weekend and going back into it but but yeah and it's crazy because the i this is the i just started last year and i had the second graders last year so i have i had the chance to like work with these kids for two years now you know or effectively two school years worth with my new kids that are in third grade that are graduating um not graduating i guess that's a another thing but um <laughs> uh it's it's crazy to see the kind of growth that they can have in such a short amount of time mm -hmm. and uh um yeah, it just blows they're my just mind. just a sponge. Yeah. They just suck up everything. Yeah, yeah. and they just, yeah. like, remember all these little things I say. And, <laughs> <laughs> like that. so it's just... and they notice things that probably most people won't. Yeah. Mm. Like, they'll ask you a question that, like, makes a lot of sense, even if it's not exactly what you're teaching. They're thinking, like, you know, what's next sometimes, you know. Right. They'd be like, oh, why is it when I do it this way it doesn't sound like you, even though they're they're doing everything correctly, and then that's... That's one of the coolest things about kids when you're teaching them. I it's agree. like adults always have an excuse of why they can't learn mm -hmm. something new. Mm -hmm. right. Whereas with these kids are so open and they suck up information so quick. That's why they're so good with phones, mm -hmm. video games, they're because they're just like, it, yeah. yeah, they're just like, I'm going to try it. Mm -hmm. I don't care if I fail, but I'm going to give it my all. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or right. just the and curiosity to just, exp just do whatever with it too right yeah. it's not like you have to sit down and be structured with it a kid will just pick something up and just mess around with it yeah exactly and but what and, like so the the like the last class that i just did this past week which i thought was i mean it's one of the things i really enjoyed teaching but we just started like they got like a pretty good idea of what the first three frets are on the fretboard like note wise and so we just started writing down like little lines and little phrases and I would play them, and I have the kids like supply me with like, you know, what's the contour of the line? Like, do you want it to go up? Do you want it to go down? Or whatever the case is. Um, and then from there, we listen to it, and I'll play it for them. And then I get feedback from them, and I tell them like, oh, so what would you change? What what would you like about this? You know, do you want it to change this way? Or like, and when I do that with adults, it's usually a dead silent. You know, and and with the kids, I mean, there's like 
as soon as I ask that question, there's like six hands up. Like, oh, let's change that B to an E. Oh, yeah. no, no, no. I'm like, oh, wow. It's, 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 yeah, it's fun. That's cool. <laughs> nice. Creatively, yeah. Don't get in the way of yourself, you know. So do you teach them ukulele too? Yeah. Yeah. So how many are in the class? So I'm super lucky because for each class, which is approximately, what, like 25 kids or so, I have them in half. So oh. they, they break in half. For, oh, that's nice. Cool. Yes, yeah, so I have them for 30 minutes, like the first half of the class, and another mm. 30 minutes for the next. They're so, so cool. cute at that age. Yeah, and they're pretty pretty darn adorable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gets you through those moments where, when they're like, you know, not so adorable, I guess. <laughs> mm. I know, right? <laughs> those, those discovery discovery channel moments. <laughs> right. <laughs> we have fun. four great players here. We have... Definitely four great ukes in this room somewhere to access. Definitely. And um, I was thinking you guys could each play something and then teach something from what you played. Maybe if um, you each have a different approach to your finger style. Mm. And so I was thinking if we took that on as a theme mm. and either um, maybe taking a piece of, of what or the the roots of of what you're doing with that particular song like if there's a finger style pattern that you're doing with that or how you're thinking about it one of the hardest things because it's easy to like teach a finger picking pattern but when i watch you guys integrate the melody of a song with that and just sitting in the pocket of the rhythm at the same time with what you're doing you know Because the melody kind of floats above it, but there's something anchored below. I don't mm. know, things like that, but um, I'm just throwing it So basically how you. to play chord melody style or... You you guys all do your own style of that Tobias chord melody. Tobias Milov style. Yeah. <laughs> Chin style. Kollega Miao style. Certif I'm certified. There's certainly no easy way to like, you know, teach how you guys do what you do and just I mean, break down can, what makes you yeah. you in less than a minute yeah no <laughs> let's give them like 10 minutes <laughs> no no right? no i'm just joking i'm just, I'm just no, oversimplifying no, no. Yeah, exactly <laughs> the essence of your playing in five minutes just you know uh -huh. something quick you can just throw up and then people will just be as good as you yeah Should well no. like by the end of this song. podcast you guys will <laughs> be able to play like you know the same as the beginning but but you'll have stuff to work on hopefully hopefully yeah. You know, yeah. I'm gonna try. Should I'm gonna try. Me too. Oh, you know what? Um, there's a, a a new thing. Let me let me open it up here. We have uh, we have sponsors for the podcast. Cool. This podcast was brought to you by the ukulele site dot com with two locations on Oahu and now serving the world online. The ukulele site is your connection to the best ukes and the best deals and our setup is the best i don't know what that's true those guys. our setup is <laughs> where's the x oh. <laughs> setup x I sometimes we have to you. teach manufacturers how to do the proper setup <laughs> oh no. yeah that's how good our setup yeah, that's not even a lie <laughs> <laughs> But probably not something I could put out there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want anybody to hate. Uh, the truth is out there somewhere. So, by the way, no one wants to sell us instruments anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, but like all of the companies always um, uh, compliment the the setup guys in, yeah. in the ukulele side. And the Natalie, like the Leolani uh, no, guys know. came in today yeah. and say, oh, you, you guys do such a great setup. So well, they probably afraid of telling. It. Appreciate that where that um, that line before the customer. That, mm. Yeah. You know, you asked about finger picking earlier, mm. and that's one of the, I feel like the top things that people like, especially adults, ask for, right? Is they want to start doing finger picking in some capacity. Um, and honestly, the thing that I find to be the most successful for me, and that's part of it, is just like the general tone that I like. But I mean, especially with the low G, since it's linear, I mean, you can just work your way from four to one. You know, and it just like naturally will create this very, you know, musical sound, I guess, in a sense, you know, of having like, even if you invert chords and things, you know, still has that same effect. And so I like to like start there and then make deviations from that. Because if that's kind of like your, your, your foundation, 
then then like you were talking about having like a groove and having a melody float on top i think it's much easier if that is kind of internalized i guess so Quarter notes, when uh, th- thumb, one, two, three on your fingers. I go back and forth. Or whatever. I, yeah, I, yeah. I admittedly go back and forth, but it's I mean, because I started off doing like mostly index and and thumb, and then slowly incorporate in my ring, and now just <clears throat> probably within the past two years, maybe I've started using my my mm. ring, uh, my, sorry, my my ring actually, yeah, sorry, on the A string, mm. just to kind of like open up chords. I really like that. But most of the time, I would just do thumb thumb on the top two, and then these two down here. Kind of like a guitar, like a you like shrunk down a guitar, right? You like mm-hmm. have your thumb doing the bass, and then the other fingers doing the melody. Try to think about um, like arranging stuff too. Is that like these the the G and the C being one voice, and the E and the A being another voice? And so, um, yeah, so you so can get a little extra movement, I guess. Yeah. Give give us an example. So like there. if I'm doing like. Um, like a let me symbol right the... or if mm-hmm. I did it yes Once in a while, throw in that ring, but mostly, like you were saying. And the first one was with all thumb, right? No, that's the same. The, this one I'm going thumb, thumb, index, and then uh, middle. Just like going straight down. And then you can throw in that ring too, especially if you see like the speed, I feel like. But mostly kind of... It's funny though when it comes to songs it it seems to all break down or I mean not not it doesn't follow the the you know the patterns as much right you got to float it a little mm. bit more right I like the idea of like constructing something and then deconstructing it you know to to make it sound kind of fitting more towards your ear or whatever the case is so what having some mean? rudiment I think is a great way to branch off into other things how would you deconstruct it or in what way so like like in that example if it's just starting off with um mm. right, so mm. the base the baseline <laughs> yeah. in a sense or the the foundation of that is it If there's some kind of melody that wants to get incorporated with mm. that, then using that. Mm. But rhythmically, it kind of fits that general pattern, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Because I think the consistency is something that ear likes that tends yeah. to be soothing, right? I, I agree. Let's, let's teach that little thing that you just did there. Yeah. What was it that you just played there? Uh, the, the first one was that. So I guess the first part is just kind of like the left hand. So just basically going through a pretty simple chord progression, mostly like a 505 kind of thing. So it's like an A, F sharp 7. You can do F sharp minor too, but the F sharp 7 sounds a little tastier. <laughs> you get that B7 in there and then B7. That's basically the what's happening harmonically or with the chords. Um, and then from there, you can kind of control that with your right hand. So we can do that same kind of finger picking idea just by going up and down, actually, and having four strings, you get actually a real nice natural kind of 6-8 rhythm. I call it the rocking boat rhythm. So and it's really 
nice, especially in the key of A, you have a lot of these extra notes here that you can add in. So even if you start from there, like I kind of subconsciously just did that last one there, I started off on A. Moved up. And my ear really wanted to hear that C sharp again, so I just threw that into that B, um, the B7 to make it a B9 basically. But uh, just using that again, so even if you kind of change just generally how you're articulating that same movement a little bit, um, we can even change the time signature. So kind of more of a three, four. fun way to just kind of noodle too and uh, um, I, I find if you have that again that rudiment of some kind of pattern or something at least as a jumping off point from there you can kind of again add extra notes and it can make it sound more melodic or of course change it up rhythmically too and have a little more fun with it so so even though I'm moving around that melody float around and even kind of move in weird places because there's that strong foundation of having that rhythmic element again having it yeah very cool super cool all right let's swap places with tobias sure so tulip, Brazilian tulip wood, it's actually a um, Dalbergia, so it is a, a rosewood, but um, it has that really beautiful color. Turn that, so let's look at the back again. Really nice wood. Tasty. And... Uh, beautiful sound too yeah so clear crystal clear crystal clear <clears throat> don't know where to start but I guess I like to use the uh, Campanella way of arranging so not to say that I don't use like just straight single line but and campan campanella means you're letting the notes sustain. It's like when you press the um, the pedal on the piano. Right. Uh, so if you don't press the pedal on the piano, it would be like... And if you hold it down, it would be something like... Kind of ringing. Ooh, sweet. I like to use that uh, when I arrange. Um, is there like a? Tunes? Uh, I mean, I'm sure there is, but there's um, probably a book that gives you the fingerings for those scales in. Um, not really, because it's it's more about like the general idea is that if you can play it on, an, on another another string, then you should. <laughs> so. So it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to follow this pattern necessarily. Um, kind of depends where the melody goes. Um, no, I think but, the best but just book like, for like common into, scales. Is, I don't know if there's yeah. a book made for it actually. Yeah. Maybe. You but like, I think the best book to get into Campanella is um, the John King, mm, John yeah. King book with the... This one is very nice. You can really when you when you put the um, the note so high, there's so much uh, space to make vibrato. Um, yeah, it's 
so that's the best book for learning Campanella. John King John classical. King. We even sell it in the book in the yeah. store. Another one of Jim Beloff's yeah the green contributions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They've given so um, many good tools. I think he even played. I think John even played a flute. Yeah, that yeah. was kind of what I don't really like about John King. I think the only thing because <laughs> it's not like, great. <clears throat> but uh, J- yeah, James told me that James Hill told me once that the reason why John King was playing the fluke, and he was like playing a plastic fluke, like no, uh, no, uh, like the top of the like no wood top, just right. plastic, solid plastic. And the reason why he did it for his recording was because he wanted to be more like down to earth where his crowd was rather than making something that he liked. <laughs> That's really I guess I understand because you're coming to it from a classical standpoint, which yeah. is traditionally kind of high knows about what they're playing. But like, It's kind of fun to be low key about it. And just yeah, whatever. I guess i just didn't think he succeeded i think it was great the uh, youtube video he made he made before he passed away uh where he has this the silva replication of uh, old newness i think he's playing like very tiny soprano old school soprano that that's really beautiful but the recordings so bad sound it's really sad but um content is good still great great arrangements the best card, card and he was, yeah he was a break I've ever seen yeah. yeah he did a lot for the instrument yeah so much i mean nothing else to say about him i mean everything is, is great work and what are you going to teach us um <clears throat> so i was thinking um <laughs> i was thinking um uh I could play a song in a, in a normal way, like a fiddle tune, because cause that's kind of what I'm into, like arranging fiddle tunes for ukulele. <laughs> cool. Uh, I use I do that a lot, and especially like Scandinavian fiddle tunes. So I thought about this um, this very famous uh, tune. It sounds like this. I could play it in a in a normal way, or a normal way, straight way, and then I could play it in a campanella way too. To hear the difference, but the melody goes something like, and if you want to arrange that into a campanella version, it would be. Okay, let me just try to teach the melody straight first. So the first one is... And the Campanella way. first one too no. okay campanella one is the <laughs> difficult one yeah. <laughs> okay so the first string is the C and then you want to put your middle finger on F and then you use the open G string A and then you gotta keep your finger on as long as possible that's kind of the campanella way because you want to have the strings ringing as much as possible. And then C, uh, B flat again. A, G, F, E, F, G, F, uh, E, C. Uh, 
and it sounds kind of trippy in the end. So maybe you wanna just wanna end straight, maybe. Sometimes it's not so pleasant to keep to let the let the notes ring. In that case, <laughs> you wanna keep it because <laughs> kind of trivia. It's a little, a little um, thing that I use quite a lot. I also like to use. I like um, things like that too because they they show the I think in general. quality of the instrument. You know, oh yeah, like yeah. you can appreciate the tonal. Especially aspect. if you're into high G. Uh -huh. you know, if you like your low G, it's gotta be more. It's more difficult to arrange it with Campanella because, because it's, yeah, because it's it's because it's, it it's gonna sound slowly, really weird right? if you uh -huh. do the same arrangements. Right, right. On a low G, but, uh, but uh, yeah, it really brings out that um, singing voice of the instrument. I think. I think in general, I like to use a lot of open strings, even though it may sound a little bit odd sometimes. But for example, if I play an F, I always just use this one, unless people specifically ask me to use this one. <laughs> Who's gonna do that? <laughs> Sometimes, um, excuse me, sir. Um, some kind of minor can you use your middle finger? Yeah. <laughs> like this, this key, this, maybe something like that. It would be really weird. But I usually play at my F like this. I also play my D minor like this. That's an add, add, add eleven, nine, add four. Oh, but it sounds nice compared yeah. to. Yeah. It sounds nice too, but I do like that um, special note. It sounds really bad in Sibelius, if you ever write uh, music in Sibelius. <laughs> this chord is really bad. But on the ukulele, it sounds really nice. Uh, that's very interesting. Um, when you sit and arrange for it, it doesn't, doesn't make sense in Sibelius. It sounds so weird. I don't um, even know what also, that means. <laughs> uh, what? what? Sibelius? Is oh, it's the, like the sco uh, score uh, uh, program. That uh, most. And it's MIDI, right? The the the, the playback is MIDI. Yeah, yeah. It's like how to write uh, sheet music. There's like the mm -hmm. standard program. I think Final Cut. No, what's it called? Finale. Finale is another. Finale one. is pretty popular yeah. too. I, I haven't tried it in Finale, but it sounds really weird in Sibelius when you play those chords. <laughs> Anyways, it works really well in real life. I like this uh, version of um, E minor. That's nice. You can play like that. <laughs> very, very simplified version of uh, Sandstone. Do you guys remember that one? Yeah. Sort of thing. Oh, 99. Oh, Party like it's 90, 99. <laughs> yeah. I think that works much better than. Can it sound so. <laughs> sound so. Sound so low. Or so. I, w I think um, the E minor without the middle finger or without the, the second string. Sounds so much wider, and I like that kind of open sound of a Norwegian field. Show me that E minor. Yeah. And the normal one sounds like yeah. this. Right. It's nice. It's tight. This one is wide. Yeah. Tight. Wide. Whatever you like. I like the wide one. So I could teach that one. It's very very simple. You have the E minor, and then you just say dagga, dagga, down. Dagga, dagga, down. <laughs> down, up, down, up, down. Sure. <laughs> and then you go to uh, this. It's a very nice version of C, which yeah. has the third in the top. That's nice. And then there's this very nice open string chord. 
That would be something like D f sus D sus four two four. It's funny how sometimes chords that can sound so incredibly boring and so incredibly nice, like the sound itself, but the name is such a killer, you know, it's a oh, D sus two four. Yeah, right. <laughs> But then the sound of it, oh, yeah. Uh, I wish someone would call it something differently. Like, all these names for chords can can be so devastating for many people. Oh, like, two, this four, then people didn't think intended, about, oh, what's the two and what's the four? Oh. And then some people get really into it. Oh, yeah, what's the two? Well, let me, ah, oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. But like the sound of it, I'm a, rather much like that. If music theory was much like more like, oh, that sound, that sound that I don't have a name for. That's nice. Let's play that one. So. It's just those three chords, actually. Yeah. So you can play Sandstorm now. <laughs> Boots and cats. I think it's mostly boots and that's It's mostly right. boots, though, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just the boots slamming your head. Just, just the boots, I think. No, no cats. No cats. There was before cats. It's 1999. There's yeah, no sure, cats back then. <laughs> but you yeah. still get that. That was a little thing. I, boots. I can uh, teach you. Sticks uh, us. Amazing. amazing. Oh, oh, so no ding on that. Yeah, this one, strictly no ding. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, is that the... Uh, uh, better. Sorry. I said that earlier. Oh, sorry. What did you have in mind, Clay, to share? Um, well, these two things I kind of had in mind were like, questions I get asked quite often. And one of them is, is tone. And I think this would be useful for like whether you're a beginner, intermediate advanced player mm. because regardless of what this hand can do physically your left hand um you can make any song whether if it's simple complex um sound a bit more full mm. and one of the things that actually helped me was over the past couple of years was doing the sound samples here uh, for all the stuff we sell online and um because not not every single ukulele that like me and Corey pick up like sounds just as good as the previous one that we did, you know, like 10 minutes ago, you know, previously. And mm. so we have to adjust our playing styles to accommodate, you know, sometimes what certain instruments are lacking in tone and as far as playability. Mm. And I think tone is super important. And it wasn't mm. something that I thought was, you know, something that I should focus on until maybe years and years into my playing. And... I get complicated, complimented more on my tone than my actual skills of playing. And I, I always thought that that is a, probably one of my favorite compliments. <laughs> um, if you can make one single note sound crisp, clear, and full, that's better than playing a million other notes that are very, they're not as clean. And yeah. as Corey. <laughs> <laughs> hey. <laughs> I'm joking. It's fun. Less is more. <laughs> and a lot. Of, yeah, that's true. <laughs> less is more. But how how can how can less less be more? That's impossible. More is more. <laughs> well, sometimes less can be more effective. <laughs> so. Funny, yeah. Me and Tobias just have this inside joke that I just yeah. repeat, and nobody, everybody's just like, "What?" <laughs> you guys gotta film me an after then. Um, I'll show you the video. <laughs> But um, basically, a lot of people um, always wonder and ask me this question, like, so why do you move your hand all over the, um, like your right hand, um, up and down? And the reason being is that I get a different sound depending on where my hand placement is. So just for example, if I take you know, an open chord like this, I can change how this chord sounds by just moving my hand further down here. So if the further down you move, you get more attack, so the note is going to jump out 
a bit more. Kind of try so Fernandez. Further away from the bridge, you move. The more everything kind of blends in together. Another thing too that um, is, is like really crucial to uh, for me is um, what part of my finger am I picking or strumming with. If I really want a warm sound, so for example, um, I'm doing a sound sample and an ukulele sounds overly bright in my ears and or in my opinion. I won't play with my nails at all. I will play strictly with the fingertips. And a lot of people ask me, so how, how you know, long do you grow your nails? And I tell them it's not much. Um, it's just as long as the nail sticks just above my fingertip, that's enough for me. And it's all preference. Um, I know some guitar players have like these <coughs> nail gauge cards, like how we do our, our string action, and That's they'll yeah. actually measure their nail to get this type of sound. Oh, wow. and like it's it. consistent and shape. Uh, a lot of wow. classical guitar players, there's like a, oh, like I'm, I'm sure it's like a diagram on how you should shape every single nail. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. When you do the, um, the way you hold your, you position your hand, it'll give you the most consistent volume. Yeah. Mm. from every finger though yeah when you true. finger pick so mm. yeah i i kind of wish that sometimes like for the ukulele it would be like that too because it would be it can so be. yeah it could why don't you make it but then everyone else has, here's what one you thing you i've do. noticed everyone's nose nails has like a different type of density to them mm. um everyone knows uh and fingertips are shaped differently so if you take for example like someone like jake shuma um you would think he has super long nails but really it's almost like not there he trims them down to you just see a little bit of it and i tried that it didn't work for me because um the way my fingertips are shaped it doesn't you can't hear my nail at all mm. and so when i come across like an ukulele that sounds very bright i try to play with my fingertips as much as possible and this can be applied to any ukulele you want there's a section in the song that you want to make sound warmer or you want the chorus to sound warmer and have the melody line stand out a bit more so what you could do is play all the chords mainly with the fingertips or the flesh of your right hand and then maybe use your nails a little bit to get a little bit more attack on the and more of a brighter sound on the melody notes. So Give for example, example like this, like this is just with my, my thumb and the fingertips. And then if I want to make it extra bright and then I will use just my nail. If I want a combination of both to get a very even sound so that, you know, I could switch it up. Um, I can go bright or warm either way without having too much of a drastic change. I'll use my flesh fingertips and my fingernail at the same time so I get this kind of sound. So what I do is I rest my the flesh of my finger or fingertip on the string. And then when I pluck, I follow through with my, with my nail. So it sounds something like this. So you get a little bit more attack, a little bit more brightness, um, but more of like an even combination of both. So, mm. for example, uh, all fingertips, all nail, combination of both. Mm. And so that's something that I really play close attention to if I'm playing a song, um, especially when I'm playing something that is very slow. Like, to me, in my opinion, slow songs are the most difficult songs to play on the ukulele. And it's not mm. its not because the fingering is all crazy, you know. It's because there's so much space in between one note from the next that you kind of have to pay attention to how do you connect everything together. And that's when the beauty of music comes comes out, in my opinion. Mm. And um, so that's, that's something that I really, you know, take to heart and... Um, I kind of wish that someone taught me that early on in my playing because this is like, you know, gold, you mm. know, information. You know, it's yeah. like something that like me, Tobias, Neil, Corey, like we all had to figure out in our own different way mm. of like how we want our songs or our style to sound, and mm. that has, mm. you know, shaped us to to who we are today. Definitely. Um, can you can you say flesh one more time? No, I'm just joking. <laughs> But I wanted to <laughs> say, you know, like when you use your nail, because I used to play with a thumbnail and I used to shape the the left half of it a little bit thicker than the, the other side. Because when you like, do you ever oh. angle your finger 
a different way I because do. yeah and then you get like a it's still a bright sound but it's more of a, like a fatter sound it's a fatter sound because you're playing with more flesh yeah same yeah. thing with like flat picking and like um when you flat pick you get like a really bright sound yeah and a real clear tone um when you angle the pick you still get this really loud sound but it's it's overall warmer it's warmer and fatter, fatter. i think so yeah, it's um, kind of like what, but in, in what we do is like we so. Do hands, you, you know? do you angle your thumb? Sometimes I'll, I'll actually angle it like this. Cause I know like if I want like a brighter sound, I'll my fingers are gonna be more. Um, it's like I'm pointing directly yeah. at myself, and then yeah. if I want like a warmer sound, my my hand turns this way. Yeah. So that it rolls off. It can also be uh, situational yeah. too. At the yeah, same yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. Like what are you doing at the moment? You know that. Right. Sometimes like you know if you're playing with like more than one finger you might want like the melody line to come out a bit more so you'll use your thumb you know after that and so there's like the possibilities and the combinations are almost endless so that's kind of like my take on like on tone so it's like placement where your fingers are um what angle your fingers are you using now are you, are you using flesh because you can make a simple song like mary had a little lab sound you know three different ways just by changing oh, yeah. how you play it. Definitely. Speaking of which kind of off topic, but didn't didn't we have that as an idea of taking a song and putting it into like a different genre? Yeah. So like Mary had a little lamb. Like I think yeah if you get a if we get like a little lamb. If we all play Mary had a little lamb and then we like cut it into ten seconds or something like that. Oh yeah. Maybe Oh and like I just I just don't know the song I think. You don't what is it in Danish? I don't know. It's just a. What? Oh, that one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. What like is it in Danish? Rides. What is Mary in Danish? I don't know. <laughs> I know. What's, what's a common the Danish <laughs> woman? Probably woman. a Danish song. Marie had a little lamb. That sounds legit. Yeah. <laughs> and the next thing that I wanted to go over was um, playing clean. Um, you know, this is something that we're just playing dirty. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Oh, that's when you get into like. That's when you get into oh, X whoa, whoa, X. Whoa, 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 whoa. Save that for later. <laughs> take a shower. Let's no <laughs> Less is I'm more. Sweaty oh, all of a sudden. Oh, Jeez. <laughs> but um, a lot of like I like throughout a lot of the workshops and um, that I've taught over the years, that's kind of like a common question that people ask me after the lesson is done. It's like. Well, I'm having a trouble playing this, and the note is not coming out clearly. And they're playing it for me, and it's like, yeah, every time I, I go up to this point, you know, I'm having trouble with this. And then, and then you're like, have you tried playing clean? Because <laughs> <laughs> that, oh. that could be a solution to, to the, the problem you're having. <laughs> what, what happens is that like, um, they'll tell me they're having a hard time, and I'll tell them, okay, like, hey, why don't you do this? Why don't you slow it down? Mm. Like play it mm, at yeah. half speed as you normally yeah. would, right? And they, they give me this weird look, like why? And I'm like, why don't you do that? And then they 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 slow it down, and then they're able to play everything clear. Mm. Right. And yeah. then they're like, whoa, I've never played it that clean. And I, you know, and then I ask them, can you think? Just think about what you did. Like what what was your left hand doing differently now than it was before? Besides the speed in which it was playing, yeah. so, well. I noticed that like I had to push down a little harder on the fretboard for that buzz to go away. I sound great. And then I tell him, it's like, okay, so now what you want to do from now, you figured out your problem. So the secret for playing clean is to play slow at first. Mm. Get play get good at playing the songs at a slower speed. That way you pay attention to what your left hand is doing. The reason why a lot of people, or even for me, like sometimes I forget myself, is when I'm having trouble playing a certain line, or a melody or lick on the ukulele at yeah, full speed and it's really difficult for me is when I slow it down I pay attention I end up realizing that this hand is doing a lot of a lot more errors than I thought it was oh yeah mm -hmm. and then you yeah. kind of end up you know practicing the errors if you're not careful right. yeah speaking of playing slow one of the world record um, violinists that he said uh, the fastest um, the slowest version of the flight of the bumblebee in 10 BPM. Yeah. No. no, maybe not. Wow. That was the uh, romantic <laughs> flight of the moon bee. But he was like, oh my gosh. if you can play something slow, you can play it fast. And I was like, I, I, don't, I don't really get that. But 
it's kind of it's kind of true and and not because it's like, like tai chi i guess something yeah because like they uh, practice extremely like slow when for me i noticed like when i'm playing fast uh, when I was like trying to be able, like learn and increase my speed and for my left hand was that I noticed that when I slowed everything down I noticed that my hand was going off of the fretboard much higher than it should have uh -huh. whereas if I kept it closer you know I can put it down much quicker mm. and that's when I started realizing that you only need to push just mm. enough to hear that note and nothing more yeah yeah and that helped me a lot with um, you know uh, with picking up speed oh, yeah. but back to playing clean um, when you take a song like Autumn Leaves, where it's generally a lot, most times, um, you know, because cause it is like a, a swing um, jazz song. A lot of people play like this. You know, like a lot of stuff is happening and it's happening very quick. But if you slow it down a little bit, you get stuff, you get a different version of that song in general. So not only can it be applicable to practicing, but it can be to performing and arranging as well. So sometimes I'll play auto leaves like this. And because you're playing slow, for me, what my left hand generally does naturally without me knowing is that it ends up adding a lot more vibrato to get more sustain. Mm. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Can you teach us just the A part of that? Yeah, so like Song? basically the melody is going in um, a bossa nova version. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> but, I feel um, like I'm playing The Sims now. <laughs> sul sul. I'm all of a sudden in an elevator. <laughs> <laughs> so like, <laughs> it sounds great. Man. So basically, it's like a good the elevator first couple, right? <laughs> down for that. Hmm, this is in an 80 floor building. <sighs> So the, the first couple of lines of this is like the chords are, are D minor 7 or F6 to a G7 to a C major 7. But if you notice that the melody that I'm is playing up here and you see all these different chord shapes, which means it's just the same chords as these, just played at a yeah. different position. Learn and your chord so, shapes. Yeah, mm -hmm. learn your chord shapes. Chord that is so Inversions. important. Yeah. Yeah, everybody's like. <laughs> of each one. Some people would be like, "Oh, I want to learn how to play like you," but when they give them like step-by-step -step advice, they want to skip all that and yeah. just like get right into it. And then, but if you do, learn you your never get anywhere. That's funny. It's like, how do I get that good? And I was like, well, you have to do all this. But like, how do I skip all that and then get good? It's yeah. Like, that that's not how it works. You it's gotta a sign up the first. times. Yeah. People yeah. want it as fast as possible. Yeah, exactly. Means, you know. <laughs> like for us to learn back when, like we were in like high school and even younger i mean it was much more difficult than it was mm. nowadays because it was pre-youtube like you yeah. said you know it's like right. we didn't have tutorials on how to do stuff we had to listen to cassettes and cd some of us listen to records like um, alta vista mp3 alta search vista. <laughs> yeah that's how i discovered james oh for real alta vista mp3 <laughs> alta vista was search like, uh, i used to use that a lot yeah back in the um, day <laughs> right but uh Teach us that that um, first melody line running yeah. in, in that slower version. So mm. this this is on the most of the melody is done on the A string. So the first like couple bars is all on the A string. So you have um. So on the A string it's zero two three eight. Okay, and then the next note is gonna be it's gonna be on the C string. So what I like to do from here. Because the chord, this chord is up here. And when I play the next part, instead of going back down here, I'll play, I'll leave my fingers up here and play the notes mm. that's closest to that chord. So I'll just lift my finger up. Because this is a C major 7. Like the chord. Yeah. You know, so when, like, the four of us think about songs, you know, sometimes like when we're arranging, we're thinking about what is the easiest way to play the melody line? Is it mm. close by to the chords mm. where we're at? Because it just doesn't make sense to go up and down like this. You know, if the, you play chords yeah. up here, you play melody over here, why don't you try and play everything close by together? And that's one of the things that, um, you know, it took me a long, long time to What's think What's it called? Uh, me too. Um, it's a word for like economic, not 
economy of movement. Efficiency, Efficiency economy of movement. Efficiency yeah. of motion. Are we talking? About, no. Are we speaking Efficiency the same language? Right. I think we are. Yeah. <laughs> right. so what's the most efficient way to like configure yeah. your hand, right? So that's you don't have to move because <laughs> yeah. the melody's up there, right? Just yeah. very. Yeah. So very very there, you <laughs> there you go. And then if we bring tone into this, like, if we use like my nail, you know, earlier I was using my my fingertips. <laughs> If I use my nail, it gives it a different sound. Mm. Uh, then when I use both, you get the best of both worlds mm. you know, for that. So that's kind of like what I'm doing. Nice. It's like, it's not really um, <coughs> a secret or anything. Like I share this with everyone who asks me, how do you do this and all that. Um, but Autumn Leaves is definitely not a song that you want to tackle if you're just getting started in, in playing ukulele. Yeah. There are some keys that are better for it that can make it easier so you don't have to go like this. You know, um, Sometimes having a low G uh, makes arrangements a bit easier so you can keep the notes closer together because like... You know, if, you, if C is right here, but you're playing on the fifth fret and you need to hit C, but you don't want to, you know, lift your hand up, you got C over here in the whole G string. You know? Yeah, that's true. So, but on the other hand, you don't have the high C right there on the low G if you wanted that. Well, that's true. You wouldn't be able to hear this. Yeah. You know? But then you get like... Yeah, that's sure true. It gets creative because uh, you're so limited with ukulele, right? You have to find alternative ways of playing something yeah. to get... The, the sound you're looking for right? yeah there's you gotta be creative and that's kind of like one of the things like every single ukulele player that's been playing for a long time you know that's been teaching and performing is that like we constantly have to be creative because um if we're not then we're gonna sound the same all the time and if we're trying to grow and get better then you have to think outside of the box definitely you yep. know, like, like how i got all these ideas and it wasn't just from my teachers it was from like watching like other musicians play different instruments like guitar players mm. you know kind of like what you were neil was saying earlier like you sometimes you can use four fingers to you know voice a chord it yeah. sounds like a strum but really it's yeah. not <laughs> mm. but benefits of learning different ways of doing the same thing it's only going to help you in the long run yeah so if you yeah. can play twinkle twinkle little star in like five different ways one slow one fast one in a different style that's like you have so much more to choose from right. and people feel very um sometimes uh like kind of tired and bored of playing the same stuff over and over again mm. so maybe they shouldn't I, yeah all uh, you gotta do is just like just be creative like why not do it this yeah, way exactly you know that's kind of hard to say it's like huh maybe come up with better ideas <laughs> well, it's like be creative right? oh yeah. that's what kids do though Stop being bored <laughs> but but that's There's what we have to do just like, get good man no, no, but no come on. us like oh, why don't you do this for, you know like yeah, 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 we, yeah we're just like oh i'm gonna try it and yeah. sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah and don't get sad when it doesn't because a lot of time it won't and yeah, it's okay. Right. And that's yeah. okay. That's yeah. a part of it. Right. Yeah. Right. You're not gonna and especially now when all of this like information is available to us. Mm. I mean, I feel like as an artist, like it's it's especially like uh, like you folks, you guys are very skilled players, which takes a lot of time to get to. But like at a certain point, right, you have to kind of think of something that's gonna be innovative, like against like, oh, yeah. the pre existing yeah. you know yeah there's, exists already. So. there's a certain uh, liberation that you can get all this information online. Right. But it it also, on the other hand, creates maybe some kind of laziness because then you don't have to seek so hard. Right. Yeah. I mean, learning and you don't have to so struggle with weeks of listening to a record because there's no tabs of this. You know, you don't have to go through that phase that also creates some. Uh, to, uh, like it gives some creativity. It sparkles some creativity too. Right. For sure. Just because to, you're being efficient. Struggle doesn't yeah. mean that you're being better yeah you know especially it's yeah. like an art form you know that's yeah. so esoteric like ukulele <laughs> yeah you know so it's a balance between i guess it's a balance because my face is too shiny <laughs> oh <laughs> it's too oily it's, in his in his a shut it up they're coming after you the, your fretboard oil <laughs> yeah yeah let some koi juice can you put them on top <laughs>
Joel just grabs me and is like, oh, I got an oil disruptor. I got to milk you, man. Get over here. <laughs> hey, uh, quick, we're out of... <coughs> Done enough curry juice. Let me check in the back. Let me check in the back. Let me check in the back. 20 minutes. I need to oil this fret board. Get over here. Run around right. one time. <laughs> That's the secret anything. to the setup nice. department in Hawaii Music Supply. We used to do the same thing with Zach, but I would just give him a little bit of Thai food and then he would just start... <laughs> oh, that's super funny. <laughs> you would be eating with a paper towel on the side. It's like Bruce. Toby keeps saying, "Say, like, Cor, be careful. The United States Army is going to invade your face. Because <laughs> of all the oil? Jeez. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll, I'll save that one for later. That's pretty good. I love that. <laughs> That's how the, this podcast is going to start. I'm just going to edit oh, no, that line yeah. in. <laughs> the title of that. It is pretty clever from a geopolitical stand. I'm so sorry. I like it. Yeah. Um, so this gorgeous instrument is from Dwayne Noble. And it is quite from uh, Washington, right? Near? Tri-Cities, yeah. What up? I think the side sound ports kind of like help with that spread too. You yeah. Can, anyways, um, this one has a old redwood top <laughs> and Macassar ebony sides and back. It's What's the neck? Is it just is the tree mahogany stained, or is that is that? Oh a back no 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 no! It's just mahogany, but uh, he. Um, because it, it, it has uh, like really curly. That's the tree mahogany for the back plate and oh, the it is a face plate. plate. Okay. Yeah. Um, I like this. Uh, what is this called? You know what? Oh, good catch, Joel. Um, I I should mention. You know, I don't know why you guys are so scared of the harp ukulele, but the I love fact it. that we still have no, 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 it's so good. I'm talking to our customers <laughs> right <laughs> now. <laughs> Yeah, but the the Dwayne Noble harp ukulele. What I'm trying to say is, it has a ridiculously awesome sound. Did you play that one, Tobias? No, I've only uh, watched oh, it okay. several times. That's the thing I always show my friends. Does well, ukulele then sound you, this good? It's like yeah. Kinda, so cool. I kind of wonder yeah. what his guitars sound like. If his ukulele sound this good. Is he, does he make guitars? Yeah. Oh, he does cool. the harp guitars too. Like, right. Like all yeah, I saw harp that. Harp guitar conferences and all that stuff. Well, his tenor here, it's uh, it's got a pretty robust lower bout there too. Helps compensate for losing a little bit for that arm bevel, but um, it's got a fat tone. Super nice. Um, and Corey, what are you going to teach the people? I was, I was thinking of uh, what you guys are talking about. It's like you guys already laid the, you know, you guys already talked about the good points. And I'm like, damn, what am I going to talk about? What about improvising? So I was like, yeah. well, I don't know how to improvise. <laughs> I don't have any good tips. But it's just like, ah, uh, you know, like what I'm thinking in my head is like, oh, oh, that sounds good. Oh, that sounds good. But then that is what improvising is. But exactly. when people improvise, there is a lot of skill involved where they take what they know their knowledge um and techniques and any kind of melody melody lines in their head and on the spot they're um you know you take you take c or something uh, like automatically they're like oh in the key of c i've played you know a ton of uh, different songs, different melody lines, different notes and stuff and see. So it's like automatically they're like, oh. See, so yeah, like I do that kind of stuff. That was the. Quoting the Beatles. Just <laughs> like I'm like, oh, and see that what I'm. When I'm playing stuff like that, I I play a melody line and I'm like, oh, that's that, and then I'll, you know, it's like it wasn't plan. I mean, improvisation is improvisation is it is planned in a way, and I feel like I'm not. It doesn't have to be. Uh, I, I can go both ways. <laughs> did, you, did you plan that one? See. No, did you plan the thing you just played now? 
No. So, so I guess it, it is improv. I don't think you've ever planned anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but like, I mean. <laughs> the basic version of improvising is like planning it, kind of, right? Because you're familiar yourself with what notes you can and what notes right. you shouldn't play at a particular time me, in the like, song. How, how many notes can I stick in this measure? And how fast can I... <laughs> <laughs> you have like a culture of brain to... You know, That's sort of. horrible. <laughs> <laughs> No, but when it's done right, it should almost be subconscious and going through. It's an right expression. Like, no, but yeah. I mean, like you're not thinking like, oh yeah, now I'm gonna just go into F minor scale or something like that. Like it's just like innately, you know, as you go up this much, you're gonna get that tone. And down, A lot that of it is feel, you know. Like you know, like, um, I guess what I can talk about is um, exercise. Not exercise, for myself because I don't exercise, obviously. But uh, I've I've done a ton of exercises and. Um, yeah, how did no. you lose weight recently? From not eating. <laughs> Basically, from not eating. Oh, food. man, we just solved the mystery right there. It's because nobody hey, bought the harp. You. That's the that's the best solution to losing weight, right? Well, I can't eating lose weight. How about just stop eating? <laughs> People. You know, your body would just this is feed simple. itself. <laughs> but it's all the, better. You know, you have a lot of food. Eat but when, some, uh, but eat then I want to die, though. It's all, our, it's all about <laughs> calorie intake. And, well, the diet I did was just, it was a meal replacement diet. And then I would eat, um, you know, avoid starch. And Slim food. fast. You, so you off up, you, are you isogenics, right? That was the one you were doing? Yeah, that's what I did. And it worked. It. I lost 35 or 40 pounds. Wow. Dang. This video is not sponsored in any way but by you, Isogenics. Like but if you would like to. But if they would like to. Um, Remember, this is brought to you by the ukulele site.com. <laughs> <laughs> your one-stop shop for all your youth needs. Anyways, back to the ukulele stuff. Um, I, I did a lot of exercises. I mean, most of my playing was just exercises. And um, one thing I remember, if, like when I look back in... Um, learning pieces and stuff one of the hardest pieces that like, I guess improved my playing exponentially was uh, the, the one Bach piece that I can never remember the name or number but it was, uh, it was on violin and uh, it's in the key of G minor but through playing that song there's so many techniques and so many things involved it's like you you know I have to push myself to to um, be able to play that piece but what that piece uh, consists of is a lot of arpeggios and you know there's a lot of sections where you have to do a lot of pull-offs and hammer-ons and stuff so um, I guess what I can talk about is some of those techniques and how it's beneficial to your playing so um, what was that the sonata something Presto. That's all I. That's all I know for that. In D minor. In G minor. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I know. It's, it's like, minor. oh, it's in G minor, and then it goes into other keys. Anyways, so <laughs> the intro. Um, I'm just gonna play a few. Not a few notes, cause it's not a few notes. It's like mm -hmm. a, a thousand notes, in in like three seconds. But the intro of this piece. You guys all gave nice modest lessons, and he's about to like. Shred I'm gonna lay it down. <laughs> <laughs> the the first three chords, I guess. I mean, it's in G minor, but the, it's a descending arpeggio, and this was really hard to do, but it was really helpful in the end because doing this, I'll I'll just play it and then ex attempt to explain it. I mean, play it and then attempt to explain it later. Um, starting from this G minor position up here, you're gonna be, um, you know, doing doing this thing. And all that is, is you're starting on the, the G here, hammering on um, the 13th note, which is a B flat. So it's, that's the first pattern. And then you're going to descend. You're going to move your pointer to the 5th fret, hammer on the 10th. And then it's, it's, it's the exact same pattern as the, the first position. And then the, the third position is right here is that first fret you're hammering on the fifth fret so that that line right there 
that is a descending ar arpeggio, right? In a way, and all, all it is is you're actually just um, using three notes and it's going back and forth between. So it's G, B flat, G, and then you have a D right here, D, G, back to uh, D, and then B flat. So it's just D, G, and B flat. So and your um, there's a well, I don't know the terminology, but it's going from you know how do how do you ex how do you explain it? Yeah, is that arpeggio? Right? It is yeah. So it's an arpeggio. Oh, You're repeating that same pattern all the way to from this top. Yeah. Sequence. There's a there's a way. That's the word. To, a it's sequence. just a sequence. Okay. Da -da 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 -da. And uh, what we're doing is we're going from this G. All the way to, to G, this G, and you're actually playing all the same three notes in a in a sequence that that goes like this. So that's the the, the very first uh, was that measure or two measures in that in that piece, and you know at regular speed it's and that I had to practice ten times just to get it. <laughs> 10,000 times but uh, <laughs> 10 times it was basically with that piece I went from measure um, it, it's in two sections I went measure by measure and practiced every single measure step by step until I got to the very last measure in the, f the first half and through that I learned like my technique on my left hand also on my right hand got a lot better so um Guess what I want to kind of explain. I, I I like to do a lot of exercises, like I was saying. Uh, so this this first piece, I'll just do this real quick. So so right there, that's between a G minor and a D seventh, and that was a descending arpeggio, and then an ascending arpeggio, and then you had some pull-offs and hammer-ons here and there, but right there you have three or what, three different arpeggios or like you know techniques that are involved or that's kind of required to execute this piece. And um, how do you use that in other styles of music and stuff, though, beyond just playing a classical piece like that? So like, I like to play a lot of low G. Um, um, or I just I like to play low G in, in general and with that like knowing how you can construct melodies and stuff using arpeggios instead of just doing single line stuff um, because now you know where the G minor is up there because mm -hmm. you played it and you're conscious about that it is a G minor not just that's that's notes. another another thing too is I like I have to when you're soloing throw in a lot of stuff that's very which is why I, I asked not like trying to but it was it, it was learning that kind of things which um allowed me to or i was i became able to play those 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 kinds of uh things i guess it's, it's through you know those re repetitive exercises not that clean but um what other exercises you know what too i i, I want to add that we have at the ukulele review.com we have um the tabulature and sheet music for what he's playing that, now that piece yeah oh, which so i didn't even know i should download that <laughs> yeah so specifically you, loji but what under I wanted to explain the ukulele review.com um sheet, sheet music, music i think yeah and yeah, you guys should print out the PDFs that we have on that page. There's a lot of notes. A, a lot. <laughs> Enter an ukulele competition with Corey's arrangement. <laughs> For sure to win. <laughs> so that I played. I guess I can teach that and the you know why that's beneficial. So, you know, as you're doing these arpeggios and stuff, not a lot of people use their pinky. This will kind of increase your pinky strength which is you know 
most people tend to just use their three fingers. Um, having your pinky. Um, I like to do push ups with my pinky. <laughs> like the Bruce Lee. <laughs> but um, if all of your fingers are able to do the same amount, it's it it can expand what you're able to play um, in the long run. Do you you're not limited. Like push-ups up by the fingertips do you guys do that that think, actually yeah, works just, yeah. a yeah, lot like, yeah that um use any of these hand things too yeah i do those yeah. mm. the rice i just get down and dirty i just do this like, a million times <laughs> pull-ups actually that's a good point a million times like yeah. people think like we're, we're like musical geniuses where we just like hear a song we can play it but like they don't really understand the blood sweat and tears that like we put into learning this stuff like you know like stuff like uh care more people care. <laughs> i played a lot of uh <laughs> electric guitar and you know that's how i'm able to do a lot of pull-offs and hammer rounds real easily because you know i used to do that all i used to practice eight hours a day doing you know like fan healing kind of stuff nah. But I, w- I would do that until like I could get it. So, um, taking what Kalei was saying is, like, how do you, how do you, how do you do that? Is you, you take it step by step. What are you know, f- find out what you're playing, um, the pattern. Let, let's go with a different pattern. Um, you know, something like this. That's uh, I'm planting my pointer on the first fret, hammering on and pulling off with my pinky. And also hammering on, uh, hammering on and pulling off with my pointer on my right hand, and the pattern goes one, five, eight, five, one. And what you're doing is you're gonna um, use this pointer finger to pluck the first open note, hammer on with your pinky, then hammer on with your pointer on the the eighth fret here, and then backwards is you're gonna pluck it. Which is almost like a, a, a pull off with your, you know, you're gonna be pulling upward. You're gonna be pulling off to that fifth fret here, and then this is gonna be pulling off back to the first note. So the pattern goes. I don't know how many hours I practiced that, but. Um, oh my gosh, this is like the soundtrack to like a bad trip or something. <laughs> <laughs> And you got the Vegas one. There's, the there's that, machines. and then there's, yes. um, uh, you know, pluck with your right, you know, your index finger, right hand. Then um, that's pretty good. Pluck the first note, uh, first fret. Then you're gonna, uh, you know, hammer on your pinky, and then where was it? So it's uh, one five eight, one five eight, one five eight. So. Um, you're gonna start with plucking that um, first note, and then you're gonna hammer on your pinky on the fifth, and then hammer on your the uh, your pointer on the the eighth fret on the bottom string here. So that's pretty much the the pattern right there. Is and then once you can get the that those mechanics down. You you know you try to in- build the speed and see you know see how fast you can get. And um, that's a common. Um, what is it? Right hand hammer. Concentration time. Do the stank face. But yeah, do you know doing that's a good thing to to work on. Um, that'll increase your pinky strength. A lot of people are just like, I don't need to use my pinky. It's like. Um, if you do looks like that, you gotta step out to the edge of the stage. <laughs> <laughs> but With that, or <laughs> I used to practice um, not even uh, picking and trying to make these notes audible by just doing hammer ons. That that helped a lot with yeah, you know on. just the fingers, just doing everything as a hammer on and a yeah. um, pull off wow. if you're going backwards, yeah. you know, if you're descending so. Try the A scale like that. I mean, that's C scale. 
Oh, that's that was not the C scale. But what? arpeggios like that that's uh kind of a guitar thing um if you were interested or you know that you're hammering on the c here this this works in low g by the way that you know you hammer on <laughs> the the fifth fret here which is the you know the starting note in in c this is the c and then you're gonna hammer on your ring finger up here on the ninth fret then hammer on the uh, seventh fret of the C string, third string, eighth fret of the second string, and then finish, well, actually not finish off, hammer on seventh of the bottom string, and then finish with the tenth fret with your pinky here on the bottom string. So it's And then you can descend, you just do the same thing as you, you know, going ascending, and then you're gonna go backwards. You're gonna pull off with your pinky, and then hammer on those notes in in, in uh descending fashion you'd be michael what is his name ba i don't know how to say his name don't be poor video video, video. video. Uh, speed kids. yeah yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so i would i would do a lot of those exercises you know this this do that until my fingers fall off or fingers bleed. That's something that not, not too much people know about, like how hard you had to like put an effort into learning this but stuff. But then, like the overall goal was no, to be you able just to do that just to irritate your wife too. You know? <laughs> such, such a couch. Just, oh, I'm sorry, I can't yeah, hear you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of like mindless. Good technique. Yeah. <laughs> and also, your influences affect the way you play too. Exactly. Like, yeah. So. Um, the, the overall, the end goal in this is to, you know, I see a lot of people struggle just to do this, you know, the, doing all these exercises builds up your hand strength to be able to just do it effortlessly, you know, a lot of people want to skip that step and just be like, how do I just be, you know, Great. that good <laughs> in under a minute? It's like, you can't, you know, cause it took, uh, hours on end to, 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 to get that down. Mm -hmm. Let's get a sound sample for this guy. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the, I guess my point is just practice something until you can get it. Um, it's, it's like second nature. Get it to where you don't have to put effort into, into playing it. A lot of it has to do with patience. A lot of it is patient. Be patient. Like the the greatest musicians are normally like the most patient people because the hardest thing to be patient with is with yourself. Oh yeah. Oh, right. Take like, take it slow <laughs> and uh, get comfortable with it. And then if you want to, you know, get faster, then try to try to push until you can until you can do it. I I have terrible at giving advice. <laughs> It takes a lot of time. It, it, it is a lot of time. But right there, that's that's what I wanted to kind of show um, both left and right hand. That arpeggio right there. It gets this hand used to string skipping, you know, because uh, with this arpeggio, you're playing all three of the bottom strings and um, Classical guitar player uh, players have that technique, right, with the roll, the three. That'll uh, help you achieve that. Yes, but uh, this is a really good exercise that I think. Let's start with. Let's go with G major. Just you know, it's one, two, th three, four, five, six, seven notes. And your um, thumb, you're gonna designate on on your picking hand on the C string. 
then your pointer is going to be on the E string, the second string, and your middle finger is going to be on the bottom. And you're going to be doing this roll kind of thing right here. So it's just C string, E string, A string. The C string plucked with your thumb, E string with your pointer, middle, you know, bottom string with the middle. And you're going to be playing this arpeggio. It's just G ascending, you know, the, the G chord. And then you're going to hammer on your pinky on the fifth fret, pull off, and then go backwards. So. that about a million times. And then that, that up here is the same thing. That's This is still a G. That arpeggio uh, shape will change. It's kind of like, like an E flat or an E. What do you usually associate that, that chord with? Yeah, for the I guess the high G players it would it would work best. If you wanted to get <clears throat> make it a little bit more challenging, you can go. And this only works with low G because you you know you're gonna start with the open low G on here. You're gonna hammer on the fourth fret with your ring finger, and then continue the the rest of the arpeggio in, in G major. And then descending is just you pluck with your thumb. And then you're gonna have a uh, pull off um, to to get that the, the last note the G so. And I, I guess if you want to try practicing it, like the goal is to get a, the consistent volume out of every note in the in the chord so. Starting with this, you want the rest of the you want the following notes to have that volume. So the second note is going to be that. That's that's fairly the same volume, right? So during that hammer on, your goal is to get that 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 volume. And for some people, that's really hard. But until you can do that, you know, keep pra keep working at that. So how do you do that? So. You get your ring finger, you pluck the open top G, and then you hammer on your so ring finger. So why does it sound dull or not like it's your own to some people? Because some people would do that and then they, so that's, they don't uh, come any note out of it. Um, I don't use nails, and the way I pick, I use it's mostly flesh in my thumb. Um, it's it's re It really comes down to string attack, and you almost want to get under the string to you know you, you're kind of gripping the string and then as you roll off you get this really nice fat sound i see some people that it's, they, they, the hammer on part is what makes it difficult yeah yeah so yeah, what you want to do is just work at that so how do you make that note clear the you just you just you just hammer on until you can get it just hammer it yeah, yeah. But, why, um, why do you think that? Is the conviction of it? I think for me, it's about hitting the right uh, place on the fret. You don't want to hit and it. on your fingertip too. Here, but you want to hit it right here, right behind it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Almost right on it. Well, but not really on it. Yeah, yeah. Also, too, it's like but the. the the quicker you hammer on, like the quicker your left hand comes down on the string, the louder that note's gonna come out too. Right, because it it's just like decaying. you really have to be accurate. Yeah. It's like it's yeah. it's really a game, you know, when you're trying to hit that that second note. Mm. So you want to just keep working at it until you could you could do it with you, you know. Any finger. Um, thumb is also responsible for creating that um, consistent volume. So 
if you don't have that kind of sound, try to work on your um, your picking, uh, picking with your thumb. I'm only using my thumb for this. Oh. I noticed after playing so much with the fleshy part, um, you build up a callus, which is nice because mm. I remember when I first started playing with that that fleshy part of my thumb, I, I got blisters like just playing so yeah. much. But yeah. you want to build up that callus, and then you, you're gonna notice you're gonna build up calluses on your fingertips, which is which is good. That mm. that'll allow you to play for a longer period of time because you're not you know. You're not gonna be. You don't have to take any rest. Your fingers aren't gonna hurt. So. Uh, yeah. So that's the the one arpeggio um, exercise. I like to do this um, just for like like a warm up exercise before I start playing. It's just you know you take um, let's take G. We're gonna use the bottom string and we're just gonna play three notes back uh, back and forth. So it's you know fifth third second and you're not even going to pluck it you're just going to do this you're going to do the hammer on and pull off technique it's just one two three you know back and forth it, it is very boring but this is how you this is how you improve your couch technique. couch exercise yeah you can just you can do it while watching tv <laughs> like that, like that. or on the phone with somebody <laughs> yeah but it was oh. having pretty good sales so yeah. Who needs a fidget spinner, you know what I mean? Yeah. Exactly. This, this will be your... This is your new fidget spinner. So, that is the same thing I was talking about earlier. And I probably didn't explain it really well. But, what is what it is, is you're going to hammer on with your pointer, the second fret. Hammer on your middle finger on the third fret. And then you're going to follow with hammering on your uh, pinky on the fifth fret. And you want to get the most amount of volume out of there. So what you're you're really focusing on like like you're really hammering it. And then when you're pulling off, you're really pulling off to get that you know that the the volume from it. Um so yeah. So uh two three five three two three five three two that's the, the pattern with that. And you just go slow. Ascending is all hammer-ons, descending is pull-off. So. And if you, um, if you know your scales, you could uh, play um, like the, the C scale, like what we were doing earlier. If you have a low G, you can start up on here. That's the same thing as with a low G, um, you know, you can start up here on the fifth fret. This is also the C, so, you know, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. Um, work on hammering all those notes. It's gonna hurt a lot. Um, you know, treat it like exercising. You do ten sets. You know, rest, stretch. Do it's you know? <laughs> and then you could uh, experiment with different different right, uh, right. placements, finger placements. So uh, one, three, five. It's a bit of a stretch for some people, but uh, that's a good thing because you'll start working. All these other muscles, muscle groups in your forearm. Which... So, have you had any like, um, because you do such rigorous exercises? Have you had any trouble with your left arm at all at any given point? Um, like, do you get like, um, I don't know, not necessarily trigger finger like to that extreme, but um, you, something... you can. I mean, but have you? I, I have. Yeah. Um, trying to get through all these or get through that one Bach piece because there's so many hammer-ons and stuff that's involved. Um, you, you definitely want to take a break so you don't um, overexert, and you know you can you could ultimately hurt the your hand by right. yeah. um, so by nice not taking your rest. So do ten of these, you know, and take a break, or keep doing it until you know it feels like your arms on fire. That's what I did. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'll take a break, but and I, then stretch out. 
you know, make sure to drink a lot of water. Yeah, it's, I know, it's and that different. one is huge. That's like, like that, that style is almost like, you know, people that go to the gym to get to Gain, be healthy gains, and bro. to, to um, But still, to get you, don't, like, you don't tense up when you do it. And I think that's important. I used mm -hmm. to. Right. Oh, yeah, but well, you, you know, gotta, you a lot focus. of people are putting in effort and they're doing this. It's like trying yeah. to prevent that. Yeah. By relaxing. The movement too. is all just here. Yeah. Just keep it there. You don't want this to tense up. No. All of this is going to start that's hurting. That's what's going to hurt yeah. in the long run. If you tense up and you're not conscious about it. Right. Yeah. And you just keep on going. Just be conscious about these three fingers moving and, you know, getting, getting the most sound out of those three notes possible. Like that's, yoga. Yeah, so then you know. do like a, a, a yoga ukulele practice uh, combo, maybe. Oh, that's yeah. Like yeah. stuff you can almost take a position. And <laughs> but we kind of do that in every podcast because the AC's off. <laughs> We're all oh, yeah, sweating. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> from, 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 <laughs>
like a That part goes crazy. Yeah, but that's that's part of it. And then there is, um, you know, the famous. does that
Yeah, that's we'll see you next week <laughs> on the Ed Sullivan Show. <laughs>